dark muted features, and by the end of the class, you'll have a cool portrait of Pluto on the page. And if you look at your pencils, you'll notice that there are no erasers. That's because, as I said, we're just going to start off with a light sketch. So we're going to start off with that circle, and it's going to be in the very center of your page. Now, you have a lot more room than I do, so you can make his circle as big or as small as you want. I would probably say, let's see, let me take my glasses off here. I'd probably say you can make a circle about the size of a baseball or so. I'm going to put mine towards the top of the page just so I'll have enough room, but you can put your circle anywhere you want. And then go ahead and just lay in a couple quick circles. It doesn't need to be perfect in any way. Just something that you can work with on the page. But once you get a circle that you like, we're going to add in some construction lines just to help keep Pluto in proportion as we're drawing him. The first line is going to go right down the center of your circle from top to bottom. And you're going to pull that line just a little bit beyond your circle. So it's going to look like you have a lollipop sitting on the page. And then the second line is actually going to sit right underneath your circle here, going from side to side. So it'll look like that circle's more like a ball sitting on a shelf. And then just a couple of more circle shapes or ovals. They're going to sit on the, in the inside corners of this plus sign that we sketched in. Just a couple of ovals. They don't need to be perfect or the exact same size. In fact, if they're a little lopsided, it actually ends up looking a little cuter in the final product. A couple of simple, simple ovals then. And that's the foundation for Pluto. Now, it doesn't really look a lot like him right now, but we're going to go back through and start adding in his features, and we'll make it look like that playful pup that he is. So his first feature is going to sit right underneath our horizontal line here. And it's going to be another oval, but it's going to be much smaller. And it's going to sit right over the top of those two that we just drew in. Now, this is the first feature we want to keep for him, so we're going to go back through and darken in this oval and really lock it in place. Can anybody tell me what this is going to be? His nose, exactly. Now, his nose sits at the very end of a snout, so to kind of give it the illusion that that snout's coming out towards us, we're going to add in a couple of depth lines. Now, the first one's going to go right above his nose, just a little rainbow, going right over the top there. And then you're going to have a second rainbow going on top of that one. And then one more rainbow right on top of that. So you're going to have three rainbows stacked right on top of one another above that nose. Now, has anybody seen Pluto in the parks today? Mm -hmm. A couple people? Yeah, so you know that he has this great big smile on his face. We're not going to be able to see his whole smile. We're only going to be able to see parts of it. The first part that we're going to be able to see are his cheeks pushing up really high into his face. Now those cheeks are going to start off of this third depth line we drew in, and you're going to sketch in an upside down letter U that comes off of that cheek and meets up with this construction oval that we sketched in for the foundation. And you're going to do the same thing on this side as well, so just an upside down letter U. Just coming up and over to connect with those cheeks. Now inside of these letter U's, to make it look like that smile is actually pushing up his cheeks really high, you're just going to sketch in a really stretched out backwards letter C on the left hand side, and then a really stretched out forwards facing C on the right hand side. Now this is probably my favorite part of Pluto, we're just going to take those two oval shapes we made, and we're going to make them one shape, and that's going to form a muzzle for Pluto. Now it's really easy. All you're going to do is you're going to take the tail end of this letter C on the left hand side and you're just going to start tracing in your oval. And this is a really good chance if you want to thin it up a little bit or make it a little fatter, you can do that. You do not have to stick with the same construction lines. And then once I get about three quarters away, I'm actually going to stop. I'm going to leave it blank there. I'm going to go over to the right hand side and start tracing around on this side. And as I mentioned, it's okay if it's a little lopsided, because it actually looks a little cute in the end. Let me do that. And then stop down here. And this little gap that we have here, we're going to connect that gap with a rainbow. And that's going to make those two shapes one shape now. And we have the muzzle for Pluto. Now, as I said, we're only going to be able to see parts of his smile. The second part of his smile is going to be his bottom jaw. And he's actually going to have a little doggy tongue coming out as well. So we're going to do this next part really lightly. Don't, don't darken it in too much. So if you go to the very outside of your cheeks here, you're going to take that line and just kind of sketch it through his muzzle. 
very lightly. And we're going to do the same thing on this side. Just take that diagonal line all the way through his muzzle until it comes out the bottom here. And then you're just going to take these two lines and very lightly connect them with the letter U. And that's going to be his bottom jaw. And like I said, it's still very, very light. Now, since his mouth is going to be open, we are going to be able to see his bottom lip. And all we're going to do for that, we're going to take this exact same shape for his bottom jaw, and you're going to copy it right on the inside of that shape. Now, his tongue that's going to be coming out of his mouth is actually going to start on the right-hand side here. And you're just going to sketch in a candy cane shape that comes off of that side of his mouth. And then right off of that shape, you're going to sketch in another candy cane. It's going to be a little bit longer this time. And as you get to the bottom, whichever length you feel is appropriate, you're going to start curving it back and make a new turn back to his lips. And just darken that in there. And you have that cute doggy tongue of his. And once you get that tongue into place, you can go back in and darken up his bottom lip now any part of that lip that's not covered up by his tongue. And if you want that tongue to stand out a little bit more, more than it is already, you're just going to go ahead and shade in the back of his mouth here. And another option if you want to gross out your pants a little bit, you can add in a couple of loose number sixes down here at the bottom for a little bit of doggy drool. So I'm going to finish adding in those little details. We're about halfway through with Pluto. Are we starting to see a dog on the page yet? A little bit, kind of. Okay. <laughs> well, if we're not seeing him just yet, we still need to put in his, eye, in his eyes. Now, his eyes are going to be two really big ovals that are going to take up pretty much the entire top portion of our circle. And they're going to be really squished together because he's really excited to see us. So to start off these eyes, you're going to go to the very top of your construction hey, circle here. And you're going to sketch in a really stretched out letter V. It's going to sit right at the top there. And then to get the effect that his eyes are squished together, you're actually going to dark, take the bottom of that letter V and darken in your vertical line until it reaches his muzzle right down there. So it's going to look like a really stretched out letter Y sitting there. And then just to make this oval shape for his eyes, you're going to take the left-hand side of your letter B, you're going to round off the top, making a U-turn back towards his cheek here. And you're just going to sketch in a really stretched outline, curved line that's going to come down to his cheek right here. And I'm just going to get that oval shape pressed up against his other oval here. And you're going to do the same thing on this side. You're just going to round off the top and make that U-turn back towards his cheek. And then sketch in that really stretched out curve line. There we go. And they don't need to be perfect. He is a cartoon, so you can have a lot of fun with it. If you want to make one eye bigger than the other, you're more than welcome to. He is a cartoon. But right now, he's looking a little scary. So we're going to add in his pupils. Now, the pupils are really where the character is going to wake up. So you can have him looking up, looking down. You can even put hearts or little doggy bones in his eyes. It doesn't really matter. So long as it's a dark point on the page, you really can't go wrong with it. I'm just going to have him looking directly at you guys. So that means his pupils are going to be two little ovals that sit in the bottom inside corners of his eyes here. And I like to fancy it up a little bit sometimes and add in an extra circle in the top corner there. Because when I shade around it, it's going to add a little twinkle and a little mischief in his eyes. He is a playful pup. And just really darken it in as much as you can. And that twinkle is completely optional. If you don't want to put that in, you can definitely color it over it. But once you have that in the place, you have successfully woken up our Pluto. Now, one thing that really helps him with his expressions are his eyebrows. And they're not traditional eyebrows. They're just going to be a couple fills that sit right above his eyes. And they're going to follow the same shape to the top of his eyes here. So you're just going to have fill number one. And then fill number two. And there's going to be a little gap in between them. Because right in between these little fills, you're actually going to add a third one. And that's just going to be that little knob that sits on the back of his head. And then kind of bring this down a little bit more. 
and to close in the side of this head, all you're going to do is you're just going to take your favorite line from your construction circle and any line that you feel works best. You don't have to follow it exactly. You can kind of trim it up a little bit if you want. It is your drawing, so you can have as much fun with it as you want. Some people like to get the bowling heads. But we are down to the final feature for Pluto. What is he missing? His ears. His ears, exactly. Now his ears are really stretched out teardrop shape. So you can have them going any direction you want, doing any kind of shape. But so long as they are that teardrop shape that's really stretched out, you should be just fine. I'm going to go ahead and show you one ear going straight down. So about halfway up on our circle, about where those ears are going to start. And we're going to do one going straight down just so you get the general idea of the shape of the ears. And come back down here and round it back up. Nice and wide at the bottom. And then as it gets back up towards the head, you're just going to make it really thin. And darken that in. And then just to show you can have a lot of fun with those ears. I'm going to have one coming up and waving. Saying hi. really thin back towards his head and you will be all golden. And you can go back through and you can shade in his nose, give him a little wet spot if you want to show that wet doggy nose of his. And just go back through and darken any lines that may have faded throughout your process. You can even shade in those ears of his as well since he does have little black ears here. But once you have touched up and added all the details you want to add, so the last mark you should make as an artist is your signature. So go ahead and find a good spot once you're happy with your drawing. And sign away. I'll probably put my signature right there in the corner. There we go. And we have Pluto the Pup. How do you guys think yours turned out? <laughs> and then a couple thumbs down. Okay. Looks like Megan Mind. Well, that's an achievement. I have to say. <laughs> well, I would actually like to take a look at these and see how they turned out, Megan Mind included. So, on the count of three, I'll be able to draw them up nice and high. So, on one, two, three, Pluto. Let's take a look at this pup over here. That doesn't look like Megan Mind. What is that? Just <laughs> before. Oh, okay. <laughs> Very nice. Got a nice big Pluto taking up the whole page over here, nice and shaded in the muzzle. Very nice. Good proportions in here in the middle. Very nice. Down here, nice and sketchy. Very good proportions down here. Very nice job. A little heart tonight, getting creative done. Fantastic. I love the ear over here. Fantastic. Very impressive. What do you think, Connor? If you like them, I would definitely agree. In fact, I would say that you have all passed the class. Go ahead and give yourselves a big round of applause. You guys did a great job. So I hope you guys have fun. I definitely enjoy teaching you. You're more than welcome to come back for another session. And who will we'll be teaching you that one? Mom is going to be teaching Goofy. So if you want to come back to sketch another dog, you're more than welcome to. We hope to see you there, but if not, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, folks. I want to make hand for Shay, you guys. She just taught you how to draw Pluto. Thank you, Shay. At this time, your exit doors are now open. We ask that you grab all your personal belongings. This exit through those two great double doors. And you're more than welcome to take your artwork with you. But if you choose not to, there's a recycling.